Bending the Dark Revival is the highly anticipated sequel to the indie horror game Bending the Ink Machine. In this game, you play as Audrey, an animator who gets trapped in the ink world and must escape the studio and find the truth. After spending years in development hell, the game was released in late 2022, with a very positive response from the fanbase, and it quickly revived the series. This game is widely considered to be superior to the original. It's an excellent game with one of the best told stories in indie horror. This game has a lot of new and returning characters that make up a fantastic cast, and that's what I'll be discussing today. Before we start, just a heads up, I'll be using footage from the PlayStation 4 port of the game, so if anything doesn't match up with the PC version, that's why. The game's story follows Audrey, an animator at Archgate Films, the company that purchased the Bendy brand after Joey Drew's death. The janitor at Archgate Films, Wilson, traps Audrey in the ink world. Wilson has taken over the cartoon cycle and sends all of its inhabitants after Audrey. Audrey reacts very realistically to this horrible situation, perfectly capturing the terror of being thrown into a world of madness. What's wrong with my hands? What's wrong with my hands? Audrey is also very talkative, unlike Henry and Bendy the Ink Machine, who is a very silent protagonist. Audrey often talks about her situation and tries to figure out how to progress. She also occasionally has a fun sense of humor. Gotcha. You can't get away from me, you little stinker. Audrey also has a great backstory. Late into the game, it's revealed that she's Joey Drew's daughter and was born from the ink machine. He created something that made him happier than he ever could have imagined. A wonderful, loving daughter. Bright, kind, almost human. He created you, Audrey. This twist is really cool. It's a nice way to tie Audrey into the story, instead of simply having her be some random character. Audrey is everything I could hope for in a protagonist. She talks frequently, is a little funny, and has some great lore, making for a very solid protagonist. Audrey is one of my favorite characters in the series, and I really hope we get to see more of her in future installments. While Audrey is a great protagonist, this game also has two good villains, Wilson and the Ink Demon, and we'll be discussing the latter now. The Ink Demon is an overarching villain in the series. He's an attempt to create the cartoon character Bendy using the Ink Machine. But due to his lack of soul, he came out twisted and monstrous. Bending the Dark Revival evolves the Ink Demon. He's more hulking and threatening in appearance. The Ink Demon is even able to speak now, and his voice is absolutely incredible. The voice, the soul, the ink speaks to me. It whispers your secrets. However, a big issue with the Ink Demon is despite his cool new additions, he hardly shows up. The Ink Demon's gameplay mechanic is that at random points in the game, you'll get a warning that the Ink Demon is coming, and you'll have to hide quickly or else he'll kill you. The Ink Demon is only seen in cutscenes, his kill animations, and one short segment where he walks towards you. The lack of Ink Demon appearances is pretty unfortunate. However, he talks often throughout the game. It still sucks that we don't have more of the Ink Demon roaming around and hunting for us. It'd be terrifying and a great use for his awesome appearance. The Ink Demon is still a great antagonist and a huge upgrade from his previous appearances, but I still feel like he could have been better if he was more physically present. Speaking of the Ink Demon, for the first time in the series, we get to see a perfect form of Bendy. This Bendy is very childish and cautious. In Chapter 1, you encounter Bendy playing with a toy train. He's super cute, but Audrey accidentally zaps him with her powers, making him cry and run away. In Chapter 3, he appears a couple of times and flees upon seeing you. Then at the end of the chapter, Audrey finds him in the subway and finally gains his trust. In Chapter 4, you get to explore the city with Bendy, and he's so cute. He's just a silly little goober, and you're a monster if you hit him. Bendy's adorable as he follows you around. He's such a goofy little guy. However, you eventually get separated from him, and the Ink Demon appears. Before the Ink Demon attacks Audrey, signal towers activate, which appear to hurt the Ink Demon and turn him into Bendy, revealing that Bendy was the Ink Demon all along. Later in the game, it's explained that the Ink Demon was captured and neutralized as Bendy, limiting his powers and allowing him to feel more emotions. At the end of the game, the cycle is reset and the Ink Demon is seemingly turned back into Bendy, who is now in the real world with Audrey, so hopefully we'll see more of him in the future. Some other important characters in this game are Allison and Tom. They are introduced at the end of Chapter 4 in Bendy and the Ink Machine, and were important characters in Chapter 5. Allison and Tom, while being interesting characters, didn't really get to do much, and Henry was often separated from them. Allison and Tom were likable, but their late introduction and lack of screen time was disappointing. Allison was a big part of Bendy and the Dark Revival's marketing, so you'd expect her to be an important character. Allison appears at the very start of Dark Revival in a nice introduction cutscene, and she briefly talks to Audrey in Chapter 1, guiding her towards the gent pipe. After that, Allison disappears until Chapter 3, where again Audrey briefly talks to her, and that's it. Allison then gets some more lore in Chapter 4, where it's revealed that Joey Drew created her to guide Henry, and she was based on Allison Pendle, a recurring character in the series. 
I'm glad we got an explanation for who Allison is. Bending the Ink Machine never outright confirmed her identity, so it's nice to have Bending the Dark Revival tie that up. Allison later returns in Chapter 5, where like in Bending the Ink Machine, she murders Alice Angel. We then get to see Tom for the first time in the game, and may I remind you this is towards the end of the game, which is pretty late to introduce Tom. But hey, at least you can pet him. Allison and Tom leave to go get help, which kind of sucks. I wish they got a tag along with Audrey. However, during the climax of the game, Allison and Tom come to Audrey's rescue with some friends. But I'm still disappointed with their treatment. Allison was a very big part of the game's marketing, and yet she hardly showed up in the actual game. After bending the ink machine, I was really excited to see this game expand upon Allison and Tom, but I was left pretty disappointed. The same could also be said for Porter, a friendly lost one who had a fairly big role in the marketing of the game. Porter only appears around two times. Like Allison, his treatment is disappointing, but he's still a pretty fun character. The name's Porter, by the way. And who might you be? Audrey? 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 Nope, don't like it, doesn't suit you. I'll call you Bobby. Porter is one of the few characters to have powers, and it's never fully explained how he acquired these. But the ink likely sent him powers, similar to how it gave Audrey hers. These characters might return in Bendy the Cage, since that's the story of how Henry and everyone else came to Audrey's rescue, so perhaps they can get some redemption there. While on the topic of the Lost Ones, they return as this game's main enemy type, but unlike most things in this game, I don't think they're as good as they were in Bendy and the Ink Machine. In Bendy and the Dark Revival, they have way better models, and female Lost Ones, but I just don't like their characters as much. In Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapter 4, the Lost Ones were sobbing, miserable souls, forever trapped in the cycle. The Lost Harbor in Chapter 5 reflected this as well, with their messages of despair plastered all around. In Bending the Dark Revival, however, the Lost Ones are portrayed as more deranged and violent, while in the earlier trailers they seemed a lot more upset, with repeated crying. <laughs> the Lost Ones seem a lot more generically crazy in this game. Open up. If I find you, I'm gonna rip your face off! And I miss the portrayal of people falling into despair from the original game. The Lost Ones are also basically the only enemy in this game. While the Searchers and the Butcher Gang return, they're very minor threats. The Searchers first appear in Chapter 1 as a demonstration of how to use the Banish ability. In Chapter 2, when leaving the employee locker rooms, you're ambushed by a swarm of Searchers, and the soundtrack references their first appearance from Bending the Ink Machine. The Searchers' redesigns in this game are nice. They're way more detailed and humanoid than their smooth look in the original game. They're also a bit slug-like towards the end of their body, and they drag their ends along, instead of how in the original game the end of their bodies were just ink puddles that followed them as they walked. After this, the Searchers don't appear until Chapter 5 during the Beast Bendy gameplay segment. I really like the Searchers' redesigns, and was disappointed we don't see more of them as enemies. At least the Butcher Gang is in this game. Sort of. The Butcher Gang are enemies across the Bendy series, and were teased a lot during this game's marketing, seemingly hinting at some sort of bigger role. At the start of the game, they can be seen throughout Heavenly Toys and leading into Animation Alley. After that, they'll ambush you from different spots throughout the game. Piper will jump out of inkwells, Striker leaps out of holes in the ceiling, and Fisher waits in hiding spots, so when you're trying to escape the Ink Demon, he'll jump right out at you. I think these mechanics are really interesting and can catch you off guard. There's also Slicer, the new fourth member of the Butcher Gang based on the cartoon character Carly. If you open Slicer's box in Chapter 2, she'll haunt you throughout the game, randomly appearing and charging at you. The Slicer is terrifying. Sure, it's kind of a cheap jump scare, but after a while you forget about her and BOOM! Jump scare! Slicer's design is also just sick. Look at her, she's so weird, I love it. While I like Slicer and the Butcher Gang, I still wish they also appeared throughout the game as enemies you can fight. It would have added some nice enemy variety instead of just having the Lost Ones. There is a unique Lost One character called Lord Amok. He's the ruler of a cult that's set up in the sewers. He has a short boss fight, but he's pretty weak and should go down easily. There's not really much to say about this guy, but he's a neat way to show how souls in the cycle have formed their own societies. Speaking of the Lost Ones, there's also another Lost One character named Heidi. In Chapter 4, she's found in the Gent headquarters and helps Audrey get into the Keeper's prison after she plays a round of hide and seek. Oh, you did it! You found me! Oh, this is so exciting! You were brilliant! Despite her simple design and small role, she has a fairly interesting story. Heidi was captured by Wilson and the Keepers because of her ink traveling powers, and she was put in the pit. Heidi's experience in the pit has reverted her to a childlike state. One can only speculate what horrible things happened to Heidi in the pit to cause such mental trauma. Perhaps the new game, Bendy, the Cage, will shed some light on this. While only having a very small appearance in the game, Heidi is still a fun character. She's pretty silly. 
In the gent headquarters, there's also another friendly ink creature, that being Big Steve, also known as the Lurker. Big Steve was a character who appeared in one of the older trailers for the game. And the archives confirmed he was going to be a threat, but this was changed in the final cut of the game. Instead, he's a pretty harmless big guy, who you can feed a heart to in order to get access to a room for a gent pipe upgrade. Steve later appears in Chapter 5 when all of Audrey's allies come to her rescue. It's also implied that Big Steve is the ink version of Steve McGregor. They're both big and strong characters named Steve, so that lines up. Overall, Steve is a neat character. It's a shame we didn't get him as an actual threat, but I'm glad they salvaged him. Other new characters in this game are the Ink Widows and the King Widow. In Chapter 3, Audrey lands in the Widow's Lair, where she fights a bunch of Ink Widows who are spider-like monsters. These guys hatch from eggs and are pretty small, making them hard to hit. The Widow King also appears towards the end of the fight. He's just a giant version of the Widows who only emerges when his young are in danger. While these guys are fairly unique for the series, I don't really care for them. They're not bad, they're just okay. However, something I do like about this game is the return of Henry, the protagonist from the first game. My name is Henry. In Chapter 4, we hear his voice when we return to the old studio from Bending the Ink Machine. Alright, Joey. Right, Joey. I'm here. I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. And during the same segment, we learn that Henry was an ink replica of the real Henry. He blamed everyone but himself for his mistakes, but mostly he blamed his old business partner for abandoning their work years and years ago. A man by the name of Henry Stein, great artist and a good friend. In his anger, Joey used an evil machine to create another world. A world made of paper and ink, where he'd torment his own version of Henry forevermore. Towards the end of the chapter, we find Henry in the Keeper's prison. Henry talks to Audrey and it's great to see Henry fully modeled. After all these years, we finally get to see what he looks like. As a longtime Bendy fan, this was absolutely amazing. As much as I didn't care for Henry as a protagonist in Bendy the Ink Machine, it's nice to see him return as a more talkative character with an actual body. Henry returns at the end of chapter 5, where he helps Audrey reset the cycle once again. Henry will also be the main protagonist in the next game, Bendy the Cage, and I'm hoping he continues being more talkative in that game. Not only does Henry return in this game, but so does Joey Drew. Kind of. In Chapter 3, we're introduced to Memory Joey, but he's not the same Joey from the rest of the series. Because I'm not the man. I'm just... the memory. Memory Joey has all the guilt from his past life, but none of the experience to understand it, making for a very interesting character. Memory Joey is a cool way to have Joey Drew return. He's not the bitter old man from Bendy and the Ink Machine. He's just the memory of a man who did a lot of horrible things, trying his best to make up for crimes he didn't even experience. I've seen a lot of people saying that Memory Joey is an attempt to redeem Joey Drew, but that clearly isn't the case. The archives say that Joey Drew learning from his mistakes doesn't redeem him from his sins, but he still tries to fight the darkness he created. By the end of his life, he at least tried to be better. It's not a full-on redemption, but I think it counts for something. Memory Joey returns in Chapter 4, where he reveals to Audrey that she's Joey Drew's daughter, and she doesn't fully believe him at first. Despite this, Memory Joey comforts Audrey at the end of the game when she merges with the Ink Demon and becomes Beast Bendy. The scene is honestly pretty emotional, and has a lot more heart than most scenes I've seen in indie horror, so I'm just gonna let it play out for you. There's always a choice. I know you're in there. Deep behind that evil face, inside somewhere is my little girl, my Audrey, my greatest creation. I'm scared. I, I don't know what's happening. The past doesn't define you, nor the present. In the end, all those years ago, Joey Drew finally succeeded. He created life. But Audrey, you're so much more than that. You were his family. His daughter. My daughter. And I love you so very much. Be quiet. Rich is Remember who you are, Audrey. Remember. Your words are. I know you're in there. You don't have to be this anymore. 
It's never too late. Just a pencil and a dream. It's not enough. You have to have. In a really upsetting moment, Memory Joy is killed right before Audrey's eyes, and his death propels her towards defeating the Ink Demon. There are also a couple of other returning characters in this game. In the Keeper's Prison, you can find the Projectionist head, and you use it at the very end of the game to reset the cycle. Bertram's giant head is also in the Keeper's Prison, and his eye follows you. Sammy Lawrence is also in the Keeper's Prison, and he's shot to death in the game's finale. According to the archives, Sammy would have had a bigger role in the game, which lines up with his abundance of merch before the game was released. Sammy will be returning in Bendy the Cage, so I'm excited to see him after his overall absence in this game. Speaking of absent characters, Boris the Wolf is strangely missing from this game. He only appears in the game's opening and can be seen crawling around the vents in the Gent headquarters. I can understand why he doesn't appear much, since this game already has a lot of characters, but it's nice to know he's still alive in this variation of the cycle. Now, for the character most of you have likely been waiting for, the queen of the studio, Alice Angel. Alice Angel is a widely beloved character in the world of Bendy. Ever since her debut in Chapter 3, she was an instant hit, and it's easy to see why. Alice Angel is the main antagonist of Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapters 3 and 4, being more of an overarching villain instead of being physically present. In Bendy and the Dark Arrival, however, Alice almost exclusively appears physically, which is a great change. Alice kidnaps Audrey in Chapter 5, and she awakens on an electric chair. Alice then forces Audrey to solve a deadly riddle, with an incorrect answer threatening to fry Audrey. Once Audrey successfully solves the riddle, which by the way is a FNAF reference, she's set free. No one humiliates an angel! No one! Now hold still, honey. This is gonna hurt! In an amazing boss fight, Alice uses the Tommy gun from bending the ink machine to try to shoot Audrey. But Audrey ends up getting the upper hand. I love Alice's role in this game. I always wish Bendy and the Ink Machine had a boss fight with her, and this game delivered in a very interesting way. Overall, this is another solid appearance for Alice Angel, and now I just love her character even more. Next up is Betty, who funnily enough my friend thought was going to be revealed as Alice, since she has a mask covering her face. But nah, Betty's Wilson's housekeeper. Among other things. Betty's a pretty nice character. She gets Audrey to her room in Wilson's retreat and is very friendly and talkative the whole time. I honestly don't have much to say about Betty. There isn't too much known about her. Betty said she's a failed creation that Wilson made. However, that's all we know about her origins. As far as I understand it, I'm something quite new. Although, I didn't turn out the way I was supposed to. One in a long line of failed experiments. But Wilson will keep trying. Going into speculation here, we know that Wilson uses souls for his experiments and that they're reborn as new characters. So Betty was likely made in the same way. There are no hints as to whose soul Betty was made with, and it could just be some random soul from a character we haven't met before. But I think it'd be interesting if her soul was from a previous character. But again, not enough is known to point to whose soul was used to create Betty. But I'm still intrigued to see if we ever get an explanation for this. The archives also said that Betty's knowledge about Wilson's plan to harvest Audrey was left intentionally ambiguous. Personally, I don't think Betty knew about Wilson's true plans, but hopefully it's explained in future games. Now for the man who killed the Ink Demon, Wilson. As stated earlier, he is responsible for bringing Audrey to the cycle, and he's the ruler of that world after neutralizing the Ink Demon as Bendy. Wilson has propaganda posters spread throughout the studio, reminding the players and the children of the machine that he's always watching. 
Wilson often talks to speakers across the cycle, further stating his control over this realm. Attention, children of the machine. This is Wilson, your friend, your protector. For 211 days, you've lived without the ink demon haunting your steps. I banished him away, tore his body in two. Helping him maintain this power are the Keepers, messy creatures made from a mishmash of machinery. Their only purpose is to serve and protect Wilson. The Keepers are responsible for the Ink Demon being neutralized as Bendy and putting down uprisings across the cycle. Wilson at first appears to be a very one-note character, being a generic creepy old man. But in Chapter 5, he reveals that he brought Audrey to the cycle to kill the Ink Demon and to save his father's life. Once Audrey meets Wilson in the lab, he shows his ultimate plan to create a new cartoon character named Shipahoy Dudley in order to overthrow the Ink Demon. But unlike the Ink Demon, Shipahoy Dudley will be controllable. This is when Wilson reveals Audrey's purpose in all of this. All of the factors must be perfect. The right design, the right science, and the right soul. Right. At last your purpose is revealed, Audrey. This is why you're here. With your soul inside him, my creation will live forever. He also reveals to Audrey who exactly his father is. My father is beyond hope. Perhaps you know him. Nathan Arch, owner of Archgate, industrial genius, business tycoon. For years I've lived in his reaching shadow. He always had time for the grand creatives of the world, the doers, as he called them. He knew only the best, the biggest thinkers. How could his lonely son ever hope to compete with that? But now, thanks to you, I can. Wilson tries to drag Audrey into the grinder, mirroring how he brought her into the cycle at the start of the game. Audrey fights Wilson off and pushes him into the grinder, killing him and putting his soul into Ship Ahoy Dudley. Wilson's soul being used results in the creation of a horrific amalgamation. The demented Ship Ahoy Dudley is the final boss of the game, and he looks absolutely insane. I've seen this design praised a lot, which is totally deserved. It's a really cool final boss design for this game. Something interesting to note is that Shipohoid Dudley appears to have merged with his crab sidekick, as his lower body has crab legs. He also has Wilson's head jutting out of his stomach. Audrey fights Shipohoid Dudley and eventually banishes Wilson, but Shipohoid Dudley survives and brutally tears off Audrey's legs. Before Shipohoid Dudley can kill Audrey, he's attacked by the Ink Demon, who tears out his throat and drags him into the ink. And that's last we see of Wilson. I think Wilson's a great villain for this game. He's something new, and I like how he's more of an unseen mastermind contrasting the Ink Demon's more active role in the game. Wilson is kept present throughout the game with his propaganda posters, short announcements, and the occasional audio log. It's a great way to keep him in focus without having him physically appear. I love how creepy and sometimes goofy Wilson is. His painting of him killing the Ink Demon is just hilarious, and his reveal that he lied to Audrey is delivered in such a great way. I lied. Overall, I love Wilson, and I'm confident we'll see him again in Bendy the Cage, so I look forward to his return. The final character introduced in the game is the new and improved Beast Bendy. Beast Bendy was the final form of the Ink Demon in Bendy and Ink Machine, and was criticized heavily, mainly because of his stupid dangly baby legs and his lackluster boss fight. In Bendy and the Dark Revival, Beast Bendy is the result of the Ink Demon and Audrey merging, and his appearance is a huge improvement. Beast Bendy's legs are now fully formed, and he's much larger. In the final act of the game, Audrey takes control of Beast Bendy and goes on a rampage through Wilson's retreat. Beast Bendy is invincible, making his gameplay a little boring, but at the same time being unstoppable and overpowered is pretty fun. You can destroy whole crowds of lost ones and searchers with the click of a button, and demolish the environment around you. As I have stated many times, all of Audrey's allies come to her rescue for this chaotic battle. Getting to play as the final boss is really cool and creative, and it's a very memorable way to end the game. One last thing I want to note is that none of these characters would be the same without their amazing voice actors. They absolutely crush their roles and deserve all the praise in the world. A good example of a voice actor bringing a character to life is Mark Dodson, who voiced Nathan Arch. Mark unfortunately passed away this month, and in his honor, I thought I'd talk about his incredible voice acting in this game. Nathan Arch is a character originally introduced in the books. He's an old friend of Joy Drew, and a very successful businessman. After Joy Drew's death, he purchased the Bendy brand and revived it, which leads up to the events of the game. 
Mark's amazing voice acting brings Nathan to life and clearly characterizes him just from the audio logs scattered throughout the game. You can tell he's a very passionate man with good intentions overall. As of 9 o'clock this morning, Bendy and all his little cartoon friends now belong to me. I'll admit it's strange owning a dear friend's legacy, but I think Joy would be content knowing it's safely in my hands. You just gotta believe, he used to say. He was such a showman. Well, I believe, Joey. I wholeheartedly believe. Nathan's reaction to Joey Drew's death is also fantastic. While the script is very important, of course, Mark's line delivery helps convey his loss excellently. I just received the call. Joey Drew is dead. What a quiet end to an extraordinary life. Farewell, my friend. What will become of your creations now? Mark's voice acting for Nathan throughout the game helps very clearly characterize him. This is a great example of how much voice acting can do for a character, and Mark absolutely crushes his role, despite how small it is. He was an incredibly talented actor and will be missed. That's all the Bendy and the Dark Revival cast I felt like discussing for now, but if there's enough interest, maybe I'll cover more Bendy characters. I actually had to buy this game again on my PS5 to record all this footage, so if you want to help support me and fund future videos, please consider donating to our Kofi. You can donate whatever amount of money you want, or subscribe to membership to get early looks at our animations, comics, short stories, games, and more. Thanks for watching, and remember, the Ink Demon is out there.